Warning, this video contains team selection and captain choices which some viewers may find offensive. Hey guys and welcome back to FPL TV. Before I start today, I want to give an incredible thank you to everyone who helped this channel win Best Fantasy Football Creator at this year's Football Blogging Awards. I'd like to dedicate this award to every single one of you all over the world who took time out of their day to vote for FPL TV. The support I've received for the channel this season has been exceptional, and I could not have won this award without your help. Thank you all so much, and I look forward to keeping you all entertained again next season. So let's crack on with the video by first looking at how my team performed in game week 37. The game week could not have started worse, with my Spurs players delivering an abysmal one point between them in the early kickoff. I've been saying for weeks now that Son was entering troll territory for me, and his red card and minus two points certainly confirm that. Shocker. The good news is he was heavily owned last week, so the damage to my rank wasn't too significant. My defence was where the big performances came in game week 37, with Alexander Arnold notching his third consecutive double digit haul. The informed defender has now produced an incredible five assists in his last five Premier League games. Costing just 5 million at the start of the season, what an absolute bargain he's turned out to be. Speaking of bargains, Matt Doherty, who was priced at just 4.5 million back in July, also produced the goods, notching his seventh assist of the season and bringing home a massive 12 pointer against Fulham. Lovely stuff. And from those two, that's basically where all my points came from in game week 37, except of course for Mo Salah, who did bag one goal against the Toon. That now takes Mo's tally to an impressive 51 points in the last six game weeks. It was blanks all round for the rest of my squad, unfortunately including my captain Raheem Sterling, who didn't seem to threaten too much against a spirited Leicester side at the Etihad. In that game, the good news was my transfer out of Jamie Vardy didn't come back to punish me, and to be fair he didn't really get a sniff in the entire 90 minutes. However, the negative was I brought in Rashford against Huddersfield as Vardy's replacement, and well, it was a performance to forget from him and the United squad in general. So, with returns from just three of my players last week, a lowly score of 45 points for game week 37, three points below the average. Although it's not a great score for the penultimate game week, it actually only saw me drop around a thousand places in the rankings, so the top 20k is still very much in reach. Let's move on now to the very last game week of the season and discuss my final team lineup. And if you haven't already, be sure to drop a like on the video and get subscribed to FPL TV. So, the first port of call this week is who to bring in for Son Hyung Min before Sunday's deadline. Tottenham did appeal his red card against Bournemouth, but that's now been rejected and he will face a three match ban. Now, because I'm currently sat at just 5,000 places above my personal best in FPL, it could be wise to bring in a highly owned midfield option, and therefore, Paul Pogba could be the no brainer to protect my rank. Despite being out of form, that is the transfer I'm leaning towards, and there's no doubt it's a nice fixture on paper, with United having a home game against an already relegated Cardiff. Of course, trying to protect my rank always feels a bit boring, so I could instead use this opportunity to get Nathan Redmond as a big differential. He faces Huddersfield at home in game week 38, and we've seen many FPL options go big against the Terriers this season, so a double digit haul there does feel a possibility. The third player I'm considering for this spot is City's Bernardo Silva. The Portuguese midfielder looked a consistent threat against Leicester last time out, and with me owning just the one Man City player currently, it could be sensible to opt for a second one as they look to wrap up the title. So with my Son replacements discussed, let's now check out how my team could look for Sunday's deadline, and as always I'll be posting my final team lineup over on Twitter shortly before the game week begins. It's a real 50-50 in goal this week, with Loris and Ben Foster both boasting home fixtures. Tottenham's league form hasn't been great recently, but their defensive record at the new stadium so far has been very impressive, only conceding one goal in their first four games there. For this reason, Loris gets the nod, with Watford perhaps having one eye on the FA Cup final in a week's time. In defence, two of my three are no-brainers, with the assist machine Alexander-Arnold being one of them, and of course I'll be fielding Jan Valery at home to Huddersfield, which is a game you always feel provides a good chance of a clean sheet. Unfortunately, it's the third spot in my defence that's the weak link heading into game week 38. I either play Matt Doherty away to Liverpool, or I try once again with Kyle Walker-Peters, who probably won't feature for Spurs. Alternatively, I could make an additional transfer this week, but taking a minus four hit for a defender is never ideal. In midfield, the big hitters all pick themselves, and as mentioned, Pogba, Redmond or Bernardo Silva will come in to replace the suspended Son. 
Mo Salah did pick up that head injury in game week 37, but since then he's been in full training and is now in contention to start on the weekend, so I've got no concerns over him personally. Game week 38 seems a very tricky week to own three Wolves players, because Liverpool have been so solid defensively all season. This means I'm reluctant to play both Jota and Jimenez this week, and as things stand I'm favouring Jota whose form has been the better of the two recently. With five in midfield, this leaves two up front for me in Marcus Rashford and Shane Long. It's not a strike force I feel too optimistic about, but there's no doubting their kind fixtures in the final game week, with home games against Cardiff and Huddersfield respectively. So this current lineup will leave two of my Wolves players benched in game week 38, and even if I wanted to play Jimenez this week, it's difficult to fit him in given my current midfield and forwards. As things stand, Doherty will automatically sub in for Walker Peters should he not feature, which isn't something I'm very happy about, but it does seem likely, especially given that Serge Aurier has now returned to training for Tottenham. For the captaincy this game week, it's between two players for me, Mo Salah and Raheem Sterling. Despite Salah being yellow flagged, I see captaining him as a good opportunity this week to potentially jump up the rankings. Amongst the top 10,000 managers, he's only owned by about 40%, which is much smaller than those that own Raheem Sterling within that 10,000. And because many sold the Egyptian on their wildcards recently, Salah is actually more of a differential than we're used to seeing. He also has the home fixture, and if past fit, also had a week's rest, having not played in the Champions League. For these reasons, the armband stays with Mo for now, with Brighton likely to try and park the bus against Man City. Sterling remains a strong consideration though, with the knowledge that a win will guarantee them the league, and to be fair, Brighton's home defensive record has been pretty shocking of late. So that's how my team could line up for the final game week of the season. As mentioned, I'll be posting my confirmed transfers and team lineup before the deadline on Sunday, so if you're keen to know my final locked in team, be sure to come and say hello on there. Good luck to all of you for an excellent final game week, and I sincerely hope you all smash your mini leagues. Thanks again for all the support this season, FPL responsibly and I'll catch you all very soon.